Let's take an in-depth look into an issue making headlines. As the COVID-19 pandemic continues to rage across the world, test kits for the virus are in high demand, especially in countries like the United States, where millions of people have yet to be tested. Now, South Korea's test kits have been in high global demand due to their high accuracy and speed. This week, local firms shipped some 600,000 test kits to the US, having gained preliminary approval there from the Food and Drug Administration, which is a rare exception made at this unprecedented time. Today, we speak with a representative of Avelino Labs, a Korean-American firm based in Silicon Valley, which gained FDA approval and is now being distributed. Now, welcome, Mr. Eric Barnabé. Thank you for having me on, Sia. It's our pleasure. Well, first of all, how were you actually able to respond so quickly and um, put a test kit onto, on the market when you're actually a company that develops precision medicine for eye care? Well, the basis for our company since 2008 has been looking for rare gene markers. So we simply use that expertise and the equipment that we've been using for quite a long time to look for viral RNA. And we had that expertise in house. And since we've been doing so many tests over the last 12, 13 years, we knew we had a, a high chance of being successful. And how are you actually able to overcome issues that conventional COVID-19 tests are facing at the moment, including difficulty of identifying patients where there are only a few antibodies present? Well, antibody tests are interesting and the more information that we're getting through studies is saying that antibodies are showing up at day six or day seven after exposure. Uh, the testing we use, which is an RT-PCR test, which is looking for the active virus, can find it much earlier. And so for us, we're using this test to help communities and first responders and those who are out actively being exposed uh, to make sure that they're not transmitting this more and more. So it's really a technology difference. Eventually, these two tests will have a, a complementary effect in the market. But today we're focused on RT-PCR testing. I see. And there has actually been a shortage of coronavirus test kits, as well as some concern over the accuracy in your country, in the US. And in that regard, uh, South Korean test kits have received a lot of global attention. Um, your company actually has South Korean roots, I believe, and your global operations are actually based here as well. Has this worked to your advantage? Oh, definitely. Having uh, South Korean roots and a very strong supply of knowledge uh, from Seoul has definitely been helpful to us at this time. Uh, we've been running high volume testing, uh, particularly this PCR testing in our labs here in Seoul since 2008. So using that expertise uh, to refine what we're doing in the U.S. has made a huge difference. It's also good to rely on uh, our team there in Seoul to tell us what's going on, to tell us uh, what new technologies may be available and keep us abreast of the, the latest technologies that we can incorporate. So really using the best of both worlds, really. But, well, it's rather difficult, though, for South Korean companies here to acquire US FDA approval. Um, we do have a few companies that have received preliminary approval. So we've shipped about, um, you know, we've shipped thousands of test kits to your country. But then why is it so hard to get that approval, though? Well, I would say that the South Korean companies have had a long history of being successful in different tech sectors in the US, and I would expect them to more and more find approval uh, during this unprecedented time, especially. But having had medical devices and pharmaceuticals approved all over the world in previous companies, uh, China, Japan, uh, EU, Switzerland, in the US, each country has a very specific set of guidelines. And as long as the companies can work through those, and help have someone help them through that process, they will find their way through. Uh, so again, I have a high confidence that we will start seeing more of these Korean companies with their experience in COVID-19 testing uh, come to the US market. And actually you are distributing test kits and I believe they weren't actually, um, they weren't initially intended for commercialization. You were developing that for your employees. Um, so tell us the back, um, behind story there. That's absolutely right. Uh, we have global operations and in our laboratories in China and South Korea and Japan, we were concerned that our employees there wouldn't have test kits available to them. So our R&D team originally devised this test so that we could test our employees and their families. So once we were able to do that and we were able to confirm that our test aligned with CDC guideline and through FDA EUA, then we released it to the US. But you're absolutely right. This started as a way to help protect our employees in this dangerous time. 
So now you're doing your best to um, supply as many as you can in the US, but um, why is it so hard though to get as many test kits out there as possible on the market? It does seem that it's rather more difficult in some states than others. Well, it does seem that way. Uh, the reality that this pandemic is just different than anything else we've encountered in the last 100 years. So you have local, state, uh, and even federal governments doing their best to help companies ramp up in production. But labs and laboratory companies are used to producing a certain amount of tests and a certain amount of kits over 60, 90, 180 days. So with the speed that this virus moved, we've all had to move those timetables up and do our best in weeks instead of months. And we just heard um, that the Trump administration, they're really trying to expand this testing uh, capacity and trying to develop more and more um, tests as well. What kind of support do scientists and developers like your company need from the government in order to optimize these test kits and also ramp up the number of those being manufactured? Well, I think there's a, a regular pattern of learning going on here. And so the federal government is using experts and learning more every day. Uh, I think you're seeing a lot of great work being done by the, the governors in each state to make sure that the rules allow for really solid quality labs and uh, lab and testing equipment to make it onto the market and to reach this demand. Uh, we'll continue to see this. And the best thing that we're seeing right now is very strong public-private partnership, even at the local level to make sure that tests and screening centers are getting set up and we can test first responders, essential services, and then as many citizens as possible. And well, Avellino Labs, it's got operations all over the world. And I think this really highlights the spirit of global cooperation that we need at the moment to overcome this pandemic. So how are your different units um, coming together and collaborating? And are there any some fun stories that you can actually share with us? Well, having global operations is always fun. Uh, you learn so much from different cultures and uh, the different experiences we have. Uh, any meeting in our R&D group has at least Chinese, Korean, some Indian. Uh, but one of the funniest stories was after our lab team had finally validated and isolated the RNA, and we knew that this test could go forward. They were all so happy they started hugging and high-fiving one another in the lab. When they told us this, the whole management team was like, no, no, you're not supposed to be touching each other. Stop celebrating. <laughs> Stand back. Social so, distancing. <laughs> social distancing, even if you're celebrating. Uh, but we do see that a lot. And the, the ability to rely on uh, these experts from China, Japan, and Korea especially has been invaluable during this time. So really, um, but then research is really at the back of it. Are there any plans to optimize your test kit? Are there any plans to improve it at all in the coming weeks? Well, short-term goals is to always try and make our test faster and more efficient. Uh, secondly, expand capacity because the demand is going to continue to rise here for the next few weeks and over the long term as we may see seasonal returns of this disease. So we're going to do our best to expand our capabilities, uh, potentially partner up or find additional testing methods or, or discover additional testing methods that can be more accurate so we can test more patients. And then hopefully in the next few months here, we can see a, a return to normal and get back to our genetic eye diseases and uh, the research that we've been doing for a long time. So there are many, many labs, scores of labs in the US who are trying to develop test kits um, um, like, like your company. But then you know, there's time, we're facing um, shortage of time and there's a, there are just millions who haven't been tested yet. Then do you think the US will con you know, continue having to import those from overseas and how can you what do you, what measures do you think are needed to increase the local supply well i think you've seen uh, the best of globalization happen in this period because the knowledge sharing that's going on between korea china italy especially uh, we see a lot of work being done in spain uh, here in the u.s that they're sharing information and tactics on how to uh, flatten the curve but then also what can we do to test what is possible from a regimen? So you're seeing that knowledge share right now. Uh, I would say while the tests are in short supply because everyone is trying to get them and find that optimum amount, uh, it will smooth out. You will see, I think, more uh, cooperation between nations, but also the supplies are going to increase. And hopefully over the next uh, few months, we'll also see demand go down as we flatten that curve and more people are able to come out and have built immunity to this. So there will be a, a chance where the demand starts to go down and the supply increases uh, and we'll find a good equilibrium there. 
And just before we go, what's next for Avellino Labs um, amid this COVID-19 pandemic? Uh, again, it's really just trying to keep up right now and do what we can in communities. Uh, we have partnered with a number of cities and states to uh, help supply their testing needs. But we really want to get back to normal as everybody does. So we will do our best to support everyone we can during this testing time. But then we will get back to uh, some very exciting products that we've launched and a lot of great research in the gene therapy space that uh, there's a very small number of people who need them, but will make a tremendous change in their life. Well, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today, but it's very encouraging to see this sense of unity even within your company in tackling this worldwide pandemic. Thank you for joining us, Eric Barnaway, Chief Sales and Marketing Officer of Avellino Labs in California. Thank you. Now, this is also where we end the show. Thank you for watching, and we'll be back on Monday, career time, with more global insights on issues making headlines. Have a great weekend wherever you are. Goodbye.